All right, guys, we had the debate, the first debate, the second debate of uh, the cycle, uh, the general election, the first debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And the uh, the result was pretty uh, clearly uh, a victory for Kamala Harris. I'm trying to come at this as unbiased as possible when it was Trump versus Biden, the first debate, I was very honest and I said it was the absolute worst debate performance in the history of debate. It was atrocious and it was uh, really embarrassing and uh, it signaled a victory for Trump at that time. Obviously, we're in a different landscape at this point. It is now Kamala Harris versus Trump and there was a decisive victory for Kamala Harris in this debate. She, and I got to say, um, I was very concerned when there was sort of this anointing of Kamala Harris as the nominee. Uh, I thought there should have been at least some kind of a, a longer, larger process. Maybe I'm wrong in that uh, in order to, 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 uh, to determine the uh, candidate. But I was surprised and I have been surprised to see that Kamala Harris's political skills have improved uh, exponentially. Uh, she seems confident. She seems calm. She seems to be on top of her stuff. She's poignant. She's punchy. She's hitting all the right notes. And she's really running the correct campaign at this point, which is good to see. It doesn't guarantee that she's going to win, but it is, it is good. Uh, it's a good sign nonetheless. So um, this uh, moment stood out uh, amongst the fray during the course of the debate. So let's go ahead and and I'm going to play this together with us and we're going to uh, discuss. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening. Nice. Oop, that is not working. Hold on, hold the phone. Um, settings, audio. Uh, input, output. Yeah, okay. All right, let's try this again, everybody. Here we go. Millions of people have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening. Now you've taken away elderly Biden. You suddenly realize how much. What the? F what they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. And a lot of towns don't want to talk. It's not going to be Aurora or Springfield. A lot of towns don't want to talk about it because they're so embarrassed by it. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating. <laughs> That's the they're response. eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. And it's a shame. As far as rallies are concerned, as far as the reason they go is they like what I say. They want to bring our country back. They want to make America great again. It's a very simple phrase: make America great again. What? Super triggered, super unhinged. Um, the stories about eating dogs and cats is very strange, and it comes from the depths of the uh, the creepiest and the weirdest parts of the internet. Um, there's always some truth to every conspiracy, and there was a story of a woman um, who was uh, apparently eating a cat in a driveway. There were no, um, there were no dogs involved in the incident and you know there are some you know these isolated incidents these crazy things happen in this world and that's an unfortunate reality of being human and and existing uh in in this uh you know modern society where there are you know billions of us and uh, all these unique stories including you know a woman who was eating a cat regardless uh for trump to bring this up in a debate context when the perception of him is already that he's like you know unhinged and strange and then he starts coming up with these stories that uh you know people again are widely uh, debunked and people don't really understand and they don't know what's going on and they they're certainly not seeing them in their own communities and neighborhoods uh it just it it's very strange stuff and it he was triggered at that point because Kamala was making fun of his rallies uh, and saying that his rallies were too small and uh boring and that people are leaving and all these uh you know things like that so uh, overall, at the end of the day, 
Uh, of course, Trump claimed that he won. The objective reality is that he lost this debate. He was loud and unhinged and obnoxious, and he couldn't. Uh, he didn't come with any substantive policy. You could argue that Kamala didn't really as well. There wasn't really a lot of time to get into the nitty gritty uh, policy in this debate. Um, and overall, again, I think the over my my overall takeaway is I feel more strongly in the confidence of Kamala Harris that she's able to to um, take on this position and able to complete the role. Uh, I think uh, some other voters will be convinced. I should suspect she'll get a slight bump in polling after this, uh, anywhere from two to three points in her direction. We still have, uh, you know, what, 50 something, 60 days to go before the election, maybe less than that. So anything can happen. Anything can change. But this was a pretty interesting, uh, interesting debate and pretty much as I expected. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Those are my thoughts. And I'll see you guys in the next one.